Okay, thanks for being patient, everyone. Um, my name is Luke Rowan. I'm a sales ex exec here in the LA office of uh, EDUP. And uh, I'm going to be taking you through today's webinar. I'm also joined by uh, an associate of mine in our New York office. Uh, Bobby, say hi. Yeah, hi, everybody. Excited to, uh, excited to go through some new features with everyone. Um, exciting to have a lot of people across a lot of different time zones on right now. And uh, we've got a team here to answer questions. So please feel free to utilize the chat and we'll do our best to answer throughout the webinar. Thanks for that, Bobby. Um, so today is all about brand new features that we've been working on. Uh, the team have been very busy at work. Today, we're going to share six new features. Uh, a couple of those have already been released to the platform, so you can dive in and have a look at them as we go through the webinar or afterwards. Uh, and then a few are coming up uh, next month uh, and the following. Um, and these features are very exciting. We, uh, we work closely with our partners uh, to shape new innovations on the platform. And really, these are the things that we've heard uh, are really essential to our customers' experience on the platform. And um, really, it's, it's uh, I think they're a testament to the fact that although we ha do have a quite a leading edge platform, we're really constantly looking at, at innovating. So let's dive in. So we always like to say that uh, if there's anyone new to the platform on the webinar, make sure that you sign up for a free 30-day account. Uh, there you'll be able to access all of the features that we talk about today, as well as uh, all of our existing features that are, that are really, uh, really interesting. So just go to edapp.com uh, and you'll see a link in the header and you'll be able to sign up for that trial account. Also, I'd like to point out that uh, we, uh, we have a, a, a page on the G2 Crowd platform and uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with G2, it's a platform for unbiased uh, reviews of platforms uh, in a similar scope to ours. So anything that's considered a SaaS platform. And uh, on this particular page uh, on this site, you'll see customer reviews. And, uh, and it's really great because you'll kind of get to hear about some anecdotal feedback from our customers on what they liked and hopefully not too much of what they didn't like about our platform. And, uh, and also hear about how they're using EdApp. Um, obviously we're micro learning and, uh, and we're a, a solution that can really cater to many different training uh, scenarios. So um, jump onto that page, you can see, uh, you'll see the link in our chat uh, and you can go straight to it and, and read up on our customer reviews. Um, also, just directing you to the chat. If you have any questions, just make sure you drop them in there and we've got a, a whole team standing by ready to answer. If any of you are thinking about joining uh, some conferences this year, you'll definitely see us there. Uh, for customers in, in the Asia Pacific region, you would have seen us in Sydney in November, but um, we're really excited to be at Learning Technologies uh, just next month. Uh, and uh, what's really special is our, our CEO is going to give uh, an address there, which is fantastic, uh, and really share uh, some of our philosophies and, and what we consider to be best practice in micro learning. If you're in the, the Asia Pacific region at the end of February, uh, you'll find us at Tech HR uh, in Singapore. Uh, so we'll have a booth there that you can stop by as well as ATD in, uh, in Denver, which I'm particularly excited about. We, uh, we had a great time last year and, uh, and, and met a lot of great customers. So um, if you're at any of these conferences, feel free to look for us and um, yeah, we'd love to have a chat and um, catch up. So we have uh, really global support with EdUp. We've got three office locations, New York, Sydney, and London, uh, as well as a small satellite office here in LA. Um, and really what that means is that you get some fantastic support for your global programs. Uh, you can be, you can rest assured that, um, that you have an account manager in your time zone and, um, and also that, uh, we are a platform of scale and that we service, uh, considerable, uh, considerably large clients across the globe. Uh, so we can certainly cater to your specific needs. 
So let's talk about today's topic, new features. It's like Christmas. Um, so we have six new features. So let's jump into the first of those. So the first is our editable content library. And, and this is really, I think, perhaps the, the most exciting release here. It's um, definitely a, a very interesting shift for us. Um, those of you that would know our platform know that we're very well known for uh, our ability to, to offer a solution where you can edit uh, rapidly, create custom micro learning. So bringing in a content library is a, is a very nice addition. So how have we arrived at this point? Um, essentially, you know, our mission is to, to create a solution that will not only deliver incredible micro learning, but really aims to save you time and make the job of creating bespoke learning uh, very easy. Um, those of you that know our authoring tool, you would, you would be aware of our features like the template library and our data-driven authoring features, which allow you to deliver learning in, in really in hours and not days to create a micro lesson. Um, however, we have heard from certain customers that are smaller that uh, learning departments need more assistance. Um, and hence, we've kind of arrived at, at uh, a content library. Um, just reflecting on other uh, libraries out in the marketplace, obviously there are extensive content libraries out there, um, but we really feel that uh, for a content library, for off the shelf content to be valued by learners, it needs to be editable. It needs to be uh, content that you can tailor uh, to, the, to the specifics of your audience and, and really let, make the learner feel like this is learning that is designed for them. Diving a bit deeper. So what you'll find, sorry about that. <clears throat> what you'll find in our content library, which we'll demo in a second, is complete courseware on a range of different topics that is ready to customize. So as I was saying earlier, you can use this to supplement your existing custom curriculum. Uh, you can also, obviously what this means will be that you can reduce the demand on your instructional designers to, to create you know, every piece of content that you would like to serve up to your uh, audience, uh, which will then in turn lead to your ability to launch a program more quickly. <clears throat> so within the library, uh, you'll see the, we can import courseware and you can either use this courseware directly and make modifications to it and, and simply serve it up to the audience. Alternatively, uh, we expect that, that many people using our content library will simply use it as a, as a source of inspiration. You'll find micro lessons that are really uh, designed with um, best practice micro learning in mind. Um, so we're hopeful that this will help you shape uh, more meaningful learning when you're uh, working through uh, material that's that's very specific to your training uh, objectives. So right now you'll find 25 customizable courses in the library. We're aware that this is a, a very, very small catalog and it's not going to answer, you know, a great deal of training situations. Uh, we launched this platform about two weeks ago. And for us, this is really the starting point. Uh, we're hopeful that with some feedback from customers and, and our, both our in, internal uh, development as well, that this library will rapidly expand. And um, if any of you uh, on the webinar have some suggestions or content that you, that you need, uh, feel free to shoot us a note at hello at edapp or to your respective uh, account manager. And um, we'll put it across to the team and, and get moving. Uh, as I said, we're, this, this is really just the starting point. So um, we're excited to get your feedback. Where do we go from here? So as we're really at the jumping off point, uh, what, we, what we envisage for the content library is a, is a really deep library of, of authorities on subject matter. Uh, we're hoping to introduce ratings and reviews so you can find the best content with greatest ease. Uh, and then obviously the immediate next steps are for us to evaluate the success uh, of this initial content library and then look to further expand by um, assessing whether we can bring in third party authors as well. 
So let's demo, let's dive into the tool and I can show you exactly how to access the content library. So here we are on the, uh, in the browser on the courses list page. You'll see a new button up the top here for the content library. And here we can scroll through that courseware that's available now. And as I said before, we've got 25 courses uh, from a range of different topics. If I want to, if I find a course that is applicable to my goals, all I need to do is tap and then import the course and I can import as many courses as I like. And then that course is now added. I can then click in and those of you that would know EdApp, um, we have a course and we have a, a range of micro lessons that sit below uh, within that particular course. So talking about the USPs of EdApp, so we now have brought in uh, some learning and, and the real benefit here is your ability to brand and reshape this courseware to the exact needs of your audience. So a starting point for that might be to go up to the branding tab. And here we have uh, all of the elements that control the branding of the lessons themselves. So we can see that a background is already populated for this particular course. So I'll just run through how we can rebrand this particular course and, um, and get it looking great for our learners. For the purposes of this demo, I've just selected uh, a brand, uh, Subaru, the car manufacturer, just to show what their branding would look like. Obviously this branding will be specific to your organization. So if we just go up into here, here we're selecting a background to populate all of the lessons. So we can upload that one. Okay, now we want a logo that will also feature in the lessons as well. Grab the logo. And for those of you that want to uh, get uh, quite detailed with the branding, we can also enable custom CSS. So I've just got a piece of CSS that I'll copy and paste in that um, will add a further kind of character to the branding of the lessons. So if we jump into a lesson, we'll now see the branding applied. You can see the logo in the top left, the background applied, and some subtle changes to the, uh, to the text uh, per the CSS change. If I go into a lesson, um, we can then look to, oh, sorry about that. Let me just log back in. Okay. Now we're in the editing tool for EdUp. And um, here you can really reshape a lesson. So our feeling is that if once you've imported this courseware, you don't just have to stick to the exact script that we have <clears throat> for the lesson itself. Uh, as you would know, the, the, a micro lesson in EdUp consists of a range of different templates and you can add and change those. So we might wanna change the first slide and edit the text that appears or potentially at the end of the, the experience, we might feel that you know, our particular audience might like some gamification. So we can click and drop in a game and then populate that game with some specific text. Um, so we won't go into it into too much detail right now because we have a lot of other features to talk about, but hopefully this gets you thinking on how easy it is to import content and then customize it for your exact needs. All right, so we'll move on to the second feature, which is called lesson scaffolds. And scaffolds are really just an extension of our content library and really with the uh, goal to make your life easier. Um, we understand that micro learning can be a new proposition to many authors in learning and development. So how do we help? Uh, firstly, we offer as part of our, our program, so we offer onboarding sessions that are very comprehensive and, and hosted by uh, our expert learning team, people that know the tool a lot better than I. Um, we also have online guides and webinars uh, that can help you understand the platform, the content library, and then our, our new addition is lesson scaffolds. So a scaffold can help you in providing a, a defined, uh, predefined structure for a specific topic. Um, and really with the aim to guide an author on how to build optimal micro learning and really simplify and inspire uh, that particular author. 
So we're starting off as with the content library with, a, with just four scaffolds. This is really just the starting point. Uh, so we have uh, a compliance scaffold focusing on cybersecurity, a product training scaffold, uh, once uh, the third scaffold around sales competencies, and then fourthly, there are a soft skills scaffold uh, focused on leadership. So within the scaffold, once we get into it, what you'll find is a composition of edapt templates that have been selected according to those learning objectives that I just mentioned. These templates uh, have been chosen with a focus to deliver maximum interactivity, which then in turn will lead to maximum learner engagement. Uh, and you'll also find some clear indication for editable text and, and explanations on, as an author, what you need to change within this scaffold. So it's really easy. You just simply dive in and, and edit the necessary places. Let's have a look at it. So I'll jump back to our courses page here. I won't save that one. You'll find uh, our scaffolds are located in our content library up here. You can see the four uh, scaffolds available right now. So if we click on product training, we can import this example. So it's now there in the course list and we can go ahead and start to modify this scaffold. So a scaffold uh, includes uh, a number of lessons, which are first for demonstration purposes and then for editing. So the first lesson here that we have is, uh, is our example piece of product training for uh, the Nespresso uh, platform. Uh, essentially, this is supposed to, this is here to, to inspire you as to what you would, uh, what great micro learning looks like. Um, and then as you go into the scaffold, you'll then, you know, have ideas really fresh on what you can do in, in, to, in terms of introducing your own branding your own uh, questions and statements, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So you can feel free to, to work through that lesson before you actually go in and start editing. So I'll hop back out into the course. So here we have two scaffolds. We have one, a, a scaffold that follows the, the script of this Nespresso example exactly, uh, except with generic text and imagery. And then thirdly, a broader uh, product training scaffold that we have really defined as, as the, a really uh, great way to deliver product training. It, it includes templates that are highly suited for product training, but we'll have a look at this Espresso uh, script and, and I'll show you how easy it is to change the scaffold. So now I'm putting my shoes in, in terms of a trainer for uh, the organization Apple. And I want to create some product training for a sales associate uh, in an Apple store. And, uh, and we want to educate them on the new iPhone 11. So the first step here is really to rename the lesson. And then it's saved. We can then go into the branding. Uh, this lesson is currently taking the course branding, but we can with a click disable that and upload our own branding. So we have a background here that we can drop in. And the logo. This time around, we won't drop in any custom CSS, but it's certainly there to add if we like. And now we're editing the lesson and you can see the scaffold in action. So the first uh, screen uh, a template used in this scaffold is a video slide. And the, and the reason why we include a video slide in a product training scaffold is that it's really great to launch uh, into training on product training with some nice engaging video. Really tell a story to the learner about the product benefits. And in this case, it's the iPhone 11. So here we have a generic video that's already uploaded, but we obviously want to replace this with um, a video that's specific to our product. So if we drop in the iPhone 11 introductory video there, you'll see it upload quite quickly. And then it will be uh, added 
to the lesson itself. Uh, so now that's there, that's our first step to delivering some uh, knowledge transfer for the learner. The next template in this particular scaffold is an assessment template. And it follows a, a script of asking the learner to recite the tagline for uh, this particular brand. And, uh, and for Apple, to, you all will know that it's uh, Think Different. And uh, with some simple edits here, you can see me uh, adjust this scaffold to the requirements of, of the, adult, the uh, Apple product training. So I can then engage with it and, uh, and then we're done. So really, we're hopeful that, that as you can see, editing uh, these scaffolds with the direction that you'll see in here, you can see on this particular template, here we've said, okay, now let's talk about the unique selling points. Uh, and you have a description in the center here that, that will give you your author's guidance as to what they should be including. Obviously, you can add different slides along the way and, and customize it. Uh, you're not really absolutely restricted to the scaffold. It's really, hope, we're hopeful that this will be a starting point. All right, let's jump back into the presentation and get on to the third feature. So the third feature, the features that we're going to be talking about are all about your branding. Uh, a lot of customers give us feedback that they want to really shape the learning experience and, and have the learner deeply engaged in their brand as they work through material. And we understand how important that is. Uh, so to date, up until this point, we've given you the ability to uh, brand lessons like we just showed and as well as brand cover images like you can see on screen here. Uh, so that you, essentially when the learner opens the app, they'll see a list of, of images that are completely customizable, as well as when they click into courses, the header is always up to your control. So there you can really create that immersive experience. And the lessons, as I mentioned, so here's a few examples for different brands where you can really reshape that branding. But what if we added new? So we recognize the need to give uh, admins the ability to brand the experience as a learner enters the application. And this first, first feature here is for the registration screen. So this is the screen that a, a learner arrives on when they enter in an invite code and they identify your account on our platform. And as our existing customers would be aware, Currently, we have a form where a learner can submit feedback, but what we've done is uh, add these, the ability to add a branded logo. Um, after this particular screen, when the, when the learners entered in their credentials to access the account, we then have a, another new feature, which is called the splash screen branding. And here you can create a screen that a learner will arrive on that can be completely directed toward your messaging. We have the example for Marriott on the left-hand side where we're just simply showing a nice, beautiful hotel and a logo. But um, the messaging that you put on this page is completely up to you. So it might be specific to the, the vision or the, you know, the ethos of your brand, or it could be something campaign-based. It could be something as a nice introduction to the learning material that's available right now. Uh, essentially, this is revealed to the learner when they open the application, uh, when they log in for the first time, and also when the app is restarted. For desktop users, it will be shown with, with each new session. Uh, as part of uh, upgrading these kind of introductory or onboarding screens, we've also added an additional uh, feature set to the fields that you can collect when a learner registers. Uh, so you can see these fields in the screenshot here. Um, essentially, uh, this will give you the ability to upload any type of field that you like from territory, city, uh, asking a learner to identify their manager, enter their employee number, et cetera, et cetera. And this will give you the ab ability to essentially collect a, a broader uh, amount of user data which will then, when we look at analytics, give you the ability for further segmentation. Let's have a look at how we set up this custom logo. 
So the, the custom logo is found on the registration page under the users tab. Uh, we can see it here already uploaded. Uh, it's simply dragging and dropping. We can drop in this Chase logo. And to display it, we just need to give it a, a check mark here. And it's really as simple as that. Uh, the, the feature that I just described for splash screen branding is actually being released next week. So uh, feel free to dive into your account next week and have a look on this page and you'll see uh, these configurations for that particular feature. But right now you can upload the registration logo. Speaking to the custom fields, you can see our standard fields here. Uh, and then our custom fields down the bottom. So you can see here, I've already created quite a few. If we wanted to add a new variable to those custom fields, we can then go to app settings, uh, click on the more tab here, and then down the bottom here, we're adding a custom field. And then with the save, that new custom field will be added. Again, if you need any assistance setting this up, if you're an existing customer, please reach out to your uh, account rep and they'll definitely help you out to understand how to get this going. Okay, that was a pretty simple demo. So moving on to our next topic and, and here I'm gonna give you a break from my voice and hand over to Bobby. And uh, he's gonna take you through two features that are coming up in, for release in March. Great, thanks Luke. And uh, you know, we would never get sick of your voice here. The, the Australian accent is very really <laughs> well here in the US. <laughs> um, but thanks for taking us through those features that have been released and, and are going to be shortly released on, on the splash page. What we're gonna talk about with discussions and assessments is really some forward looking visions that we have for the platform. Um, so if you would advance to the next slide, Luke. Um, when we think about EdApp, we've been really fortunate that we've kind of come to the forefront as, as the leaders in micro lessons. So hopefully everybody who is on has had an opportunity to, to give our platform a try and have a, a pretty good understanding of, of the way that we operate in the micro lesson space. Um, and if not, please feel free to connect with us after the webinar. But what we're really looking to do with discussions and assessments is really provide a, a, a very comprehensive sphere of the understanding of your learners. So, Right now with our micro lessons, we have a very comprehensive analytic suite that it provides a really black and white type of analysis of, of giving you an understanding of how your learners are performing. With discussions and assessments, it's going to really give you the, the insight of how your learners are actually comprehending certain topics by giving them the ability to showcase their thoughts in a little bit more of a long form manner. Um, so if you wanna go ahead and advance to the next slide, Luke. So let's, let's talk about some of the benefits here. And uh, if, again, if you've used our platform, you're familiar with the right-hand side of the screen here is, is an example of our social learning feature. Um, and, and what we're going to do is really be building upon this type of, of learning where we're giving the, the learners an opportunity to really showcase their voice um, and encourage some reflection. And this is particularly useful when you think about some of these larger learning projects where there's probably some face-to-face -face learning involved. And, and this is really going to give coaches and, and thought leaders within the organization in addition to, to augment that. Um, and again, really understand how are my learners actually comprehending the, the topics that we're going through, um, particularly in these in these face-to-face -face type of interactions. Um, and, and in addition to the comprehension and, and understanding that, we're also driving a lot of interaction throughout the learners. And so I, I think about a number of conversations that, that we have had with, with customers and one in particular with a large hospitality group that we had been speaking with. And one of the challenges that they face as an organization is that they've got hundreds of locations across the United States, but um, they're, they're all one team. They're all part of one group and they're struggling in having their employees feel like they're still all on the same team. And when you think about providing the opportunity for discussions of learners across um, a wide range of states or even across the globe. We're giving them the opportunity to connect with each other, um, really feel like they're all on the same team. And additionally, you're, you're giving some of your, your employees and learners the opportunity to share the best ideas so that um, you can really capitalize on having a consistent brand experience no matter where your, you know, your customers could be visiting certain locations. 
you can move on to the next slide, Luke. Thank you. Um, so now let's let's look at you know what the development team is working on and, and how we envision this being released. Um, you can see that we've you know we've made some some good headway, but we take our customer feedback very seriously. So we'd love to learn some of your thoughts following this webinar. But what we're looking at is is the ability for learners to go in and really latch on to certain threads that they feel could be important. Um, so their peers may have a really interesting thought on, on whatever discussion topic you've presented and they really wanna see the debate kind of going back and forth. And within that, we're going to give the, the coaches or the mentor, um, you know, those who are leading the discussions an opportunity to, to weight their response a little bit heavier. So you'll notice that we've just provided a, a simple feature of, of highlighting the mentor's response so that the learners can easily go in and, and see, okay, what does the thought leader think about this discussion that we're having? So it's really exciting with, uh, with how we plan on rolling this out and, and having your learners interact with some coaches and, and thought leaders in the organization. If you can move on, thank you. Um, so now looking at, at the use case, and I think this is really exciting with, uh, we obviously have the, the example on screen of have you experienced a, a cyber threat at work? Can you describe what happened? Um, but I think about if, if your learners are going to a conference or even if you're hosting one internally, and you may have somebody who poses a really thought provoking question that uh, you simply run out of time to, to go over during a conference, you can you know, start a discussion around this. And again, really understand how does everybody feel about this? What type of feedback do they have? Um, how are they comprehend, comprehending what was presented? And it's a really succinct way for, for you to understand where, where everybody stands on, on these really thought-provoking topics. So moving into the second arm of, of what, we are, what our, our team is working hard on um, is the assessment piece of it. And there, there is a, a bit of overlap with our discussion piece, but here we're really giving the, the thought leader, the coach, the mentor, the ability to actually score um, the responses that are submitted by your learners. So again, this is going to give them a chance to um, have their voice and their thoughts be heard. Uh, and, and their responses will be in one of four buckets, either an unsubmitted, um, submitted and pending review, submitted and try again, and or submission with a pass. And one of the key differences here is that the learners will not be able to see their peers' responses until they've submitted their own. Um, and so again, it's it's a way to really drive home uh, certain topics that you feel are, are very important that you want to make sure that everybody is comprehending very well and fully understands. Um, and so then you'll have the opportunity to grade those responses and, um, and provide feedback in a little bit more of a long form manner. So again, really giving a, a full sphere of understanding of where your learners thoughts are on, on important topics in addition to the analytics that we provide. And again, you can think about many use cases here um, that, that you could roll out to your learners. I love the example on screen where um, you want them to provide an example where they've used passive leadership. Um, this is not only you know, thought provoking for them to really understand how they're going to use passive leadership, how they've used it, but also the opportunity for you to say, okay, does this person really understand what passive leadership is? And if not, how can I help coach them to get to that point where, where they fully understand it and then can utilize it within your organization. Um, so it's, it's definitely a, a really exciting time coming up for EDAP. Uh, the team is hard at work at it, but please feel free to offer your feedback. Um, and you know, we, we take it very seriously. We'd love to hear your ideas. Uh, so <clears throat> with that being said, I will pass it back to the West Coast, to Luke, to, uh, to wrap up with Playlist. Thanks for that, Bobby. That was great. Um, so the last feature that we're going to be talking about is launching in February um, and we're kind of in a last but not least scenario here. Playlist is going to make life easier for many of our uh, content administrators and really improve the, the learner experience when it comes to working through courseware. So Playlist is, is essentially our answer to delivering learning pathways. This will give admins the ability to configure material once and then seamlessly onboard learners and have the learner uh, be able to migrate from different groups uh, within their organization, uh, whether that be from an onboarding group into uh, an established employee. Uh, and essentially for you as an admin, uh, 
be no touch with that with that particular migration. Um, we're, we're quite hopeful that this this introduction of playlists will also deliver um, new and and higher uh, completion rates of content. Um, really making it apparent to learners the, what material they have to complete and by when. For learners, it's all about giving them a, a clearer interface that they can access on the mobile device to be able to work through a structure of content and really understand what are those apparent due dates for the content that they're being served up. Importantly, we're, we're working on features for, for delivering notifications, which will alert learners uh, as to when material is due, so they don't have to actually check the app to find out. They'll be an alerted uh, externally. So let's have a look here as a, as a nice example of what the learner will see when they're accessing a playlist. Uh, essentially, as you can see on the right-hand side, it is a collection of courses that have been curated on a specific topic or for a learning uh, objective. Uh, you can see there at the top there, the ability to launch into the playlist with the play button. And that might be launching the very first lesson that's been set up uh, for anyone that's new or uh, returning to their place uh, if someone has, has already made it through some, some courseware. So if we think about a, a practical example here, a playlist could be, a list of courses that are suitable for a new hire. So we might want to take them through some cyber training. We might want to give them uh, an introduction to the company principles and vision. We might want to uh, do some safety compliance training and really curate that list of courses within that playlist. For admins, uh, as I was saying earlier, our goal is to make your life very easy. Uh, so you'll have the ability to schedule a sequence of courses using our authoring tool and, um, and relate those courses uh, in terms of their uh, sequencing and, uh, and uh, availability in the platform. Um, we'll also give you the ability to schedule playlists around dynamic uh, fields and attributes. For example, uh, obviously, an onboarding course uh, is, is served up to most uh, or all new employees. However, those employees don't start all on the same day. So we want to be able to schedule out a, a set of courseware and, uh, and uh, reflect or hinge those due dates off a, a relative date where a new learner might start on the platform. And, um, Using those features combined with our features for dynamic user groups will really drop the user into the right bucket and then give them with playlists, give them the right content. So dynamic user groups, many of you would know that is already a feature that's available. And essentially here, uh, we're able to assign attributes to individual learners. And as those attributes change, for example, a new hire would migrate into a, into a fully fledged role um those attributes change and then therefore change the user group that the learner will sit in within within our application and then in turn the courseware that they see and taking that even further using an integration with sso uh, we can essentially be checking uh automatically with your directory to see if those attributes have changed uh, and we can do that nightly uh, and once those attributes have changed uh, the next day the learner opens up the platform, they'll see their new set of courseware. So uh, as with um, the, the two previous features, that is really for such a sophisticated feature, a very brief introduction. And as we work closer to releasing that feature, as well as discussions and assessments, we will be releasing uh, more in-depth webinars to show you how it works and, and get you hands on on the tool. So that covers off everything today. I, I hope everyone enjoyed uh, the, uh, the Australian and American combination.